Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our Republic of Ireland all time eleven, and this time we have got our two centre backs. So we're not going to do a separate video. We're going to have the two centre backs in this video. Um, so a short list to have: Paul McGrath, Mark Lawrenson, Kevin Moran, Mick McCarthy, Steve Staunton, Ke Kenny Cunningham, Richie Dunn, John O'Shea. David O'Leary, and I'd say you have some as well there. Okay? I have a few more. I have, um, did you say Mark Lawrence? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I have Con Martin um, back in the 40s and 50s. And uh, Charlie Hurley, who any Sunderland fan will certainly remember, and another great and the Irish team in the late 50s and right through the 60s at, at stalwart of our central defence. So I'd like to make a shout out for both of them as well so absolutely yeah um but just kind of use what i probably seem more like the, the the ones that are kind of main standouts for me cunningham dunn o'shea staunton the rest were, were were i wouldn't have seen as much uh like on the regular so you okay. could probably speak more highly of them i'd probably start with yourself okay Carrie. well i i the one i the my all-time Greatest and favourite Republic of Ireland player is Paul McGrath. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think he's been our greatest ever player. In particular, that performance, it was there in Giant Stadium. Um, that performance against Italy was just superb. But in general, Paul was just such a superb player. And he he would have to be one of the two centre-backs for me. I think it's just not even... I, I don't think there's even an argument. He was just such a superb player. Initially playing, I know you could put him in the midfield argument because Jack used him as a, a modern as a modern day defensive midfield player or as a number six when it wasn't really the role wasn't really understood maybe in eighty eight and ninety. But Paul played in front of the back four, in front of Mick Mick McCarthy and Kevin Warren as it was then. And uh, he, he was a superb player for Euro eighty eight and Italia ninety, but then moved back into his preferred position. I think it was Alex Ferguson said one of his best, greatest mistakes as Manchester United manager was um, actually getting rid of Paul McGrath. Yeah, well, he tried to kind of flog him off, didn't he, to try and yeah. retire him, didn't he? Yeah, I think, well, I think there, there was well, there issues of trying to break up, uh, yeah, I think it was Paul McGrath, Brian Robson, I know they're in different positions, oh, but there was other, yeah. other, yeah, there was other things going on in the club that he needed to to separate, so maybe we can't talk about those, but, um, yeah. well, he but did, Paul well, it, was a It shows when he went player. to Villa then, what yeah. he done there, it was the second in the league they got them. Yeah, oh, he was, he, that was a superb Villa side as well, you know, and... Uh, but in in a green shirt, he was he was just superb. Okay, and, well, uh, well, I know you're sold on on one position, but if we're kind of going through the rest of the list, is there anyone there that kind of jumps out at you and you're just like, um, you know, because there's so many good players there, like, will, uh, well, just somebody that, that we've kind of missed out there and just remembered as well because we were talking about the '94 game. You know, Phil Bab in that game was absolutely superb. Yeah, uh, probably a player in my opinion never really reached his full potential I don't think I think he was unlucky with a few injuries and s stuff but him and Paul together were a great partnership and also when we're talking about all time 11 and you know are we talking about individuals to me I think again centre backs you ha you want to play a as a partnership who complement each other to me in my footballing world it would always be a player who's who's strong and athletic against a player who's more of a, a finesse player and we look at some of the great partnerships in the Premier League over the past few years the likes of Ferdinand and Vidic Carvalho and Terry complemented each other so well and I think that's why why Paul alongside either Mick McCarthy or Kevin Moran it was such a great partnership and back in those days I think when we look back even though we had some good strikers and stuff it was always our defence yeah. was kind of the mainstay of the team and it was rock solid we look at 1990 some things never change <laughs> yeah we look at 1990 though and, and you know that those group games against England and it was th was three draws wasn't it and that, that got us through um, we, you know we came up against a really good Dutch side uh, you know again a really good English side and we, you know, we contained them and we, we, we played the game that we went out to, to play and got through. Um, for me, yeah, as, as you said, I think Paul McGrath is the greatest player to have ever pulled on an Irish shirt. I think his natural ability was just incredible. Um, he played the game with ease. It was almost as if everything else around him just slowed down. He could see things quicker than any other player that I've ever seen. Again, I don't think his potential was completely um, fulfilled. I think obviously the off the field issues were always were tough and I'm sure Paul would admit that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um but again, yeah, and, and not even just the greatest Irish player of all time. I think he's he's one of the best players to have played in England. I think he's hugely underrated. Um 
you know, we talk about the author field issues. We haven't even mentioned his knees. You know, he, he couldn't train yeah. at times. And yet he'd go out on a pitch and perform the way he did. Um, just a, an incredible player. So for me, Paul is in there straight away. And then, so you know. Is it just we're all going to go. <laughs> like I, and then I, I, couldn't, <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more because I was lucky enough. I went to every Irish game when I was a kid. And he was the one who just stood out <laughs> head and shoulders above everyone else. I like what you said about, you know, he was that kind of great player that everything else slowed down around him. Um, I think to put into perspective as well, um, you know, you're saying about his knees. He he was one of only three players to ever win the PFA Player of the Year as a oh. defender. Yeah. Virgil Van Dijk, like to the modern fan, Virgil Van Dijk obviously won it this year, and everyone's saying that's a big deal because he came second in the league. Paul McGrath couldn't train, and he won it in ninety two, ninety three mm. with Aston Villa. So like that shows. I don't think he was criminally underrated or anything. I think time time has maybe forgotten that's because true. football wasn't as much of a twenty four seven industry as it is now but I think without a shadow of a doubt Ireland's most naturally talented footballer because for me you can talk about tactics and coaching and systems all day long Paul McGrath was born a footballer end mm. of story he just he just had it and I don't think there was probably too much coaching went in to make him as good as he he became and I think the fact he couldn't train and I think the fact he had the off the field issues as well kind of built into the mysticism around him almost like how is this fella able to not train and then just be the best player in the pitch and I think for average fans you can kind of relate to them flawed geniuses a bit more mm. because you look at the lads and you say oh they're so dedicated and probably most of us average Joes don't have that level of discipline in their life and you can probably relate to somebody a bit more more of a man of the it was the southern George Best yeah, in yeah a way. No, he you was, know what I mean the same sort of yeah. probably didn't train too hard didn't work yeah. You know, you see some players who, who put it in on the training and spend hours on the training pitch afterwards perfecting their genius, whereas it's just natural to yeah. Paul yeah. McGrath. Just talent, just yeah. pure natural talent. Yeah, yeah. I, I look, I, I, I'm not going to get into it, an argument for, for McGrath. I do I do believe, I, I got to see some of his later games, I, albeit not as much, but when you, I've, I've interviewed legends like Kevin Sheedy and, and other great players who've played with some of the best players and they say like, Regardless of all the clubs they played for, Ireland or whatever club, Paul McGrath was the best player they ever played with. Um, didn't Cascarino say it as well? Yeah, yeah, again. And I think that's one of the reasons managers put up with um, what they had to with all the extra baggage that came along. Because um, I think Tony told me about when he was in Hong Kong with with Paul McGrath and they, <laughs> they went out and they... <laughs> Paul missed his flight back for the Ireland game and Jack basically blamed Tony for not minding Paul. So there's plenty of stories there that they have to relate to. But um, yeah, I think the only other question that you could kind of put in was was almost Paul wasted at centre-back. You know, could he have been a midfield genius? Um, you know, we talk about the likes of Andre Perlo or somebody like that pulling the strings maybe he hadn't got maybe the leadership qualities for that sort of a role but you know he if you wanted to switch the team around and include Mick McCarthy and Kevin Moran or maybe John O'Shea or Richard Dunn maybe and put push Paul forward but I think probably his best position in an Irish shirt was probably his best game was a centre back I, I think he was such a great defender you mm. know he was just he could read the game he He's just made so many interceptions. He was getting in front of people. And that I mean, game you said about 94, we yeah. seem to forget as well. Roberto Baggio, who played in the mm. Italian side of 94, was the best player in the world at yeah. that time, by far. He was incredible. Yeah. He was on his game. He he was the one who got yeah. Italy to, to the final. Obviously missed the penalty then. but yeah. um, And McGrath just made him look ordinary. Can I just say one more thing about while we're having our Paul McGrath love fest? <laughs> I remember growing up and seeing him playing for Aston Villa and when the ball would come in, so he say he was playing as a left-sided centre-back, when the ball, the cross would come in like this, most defenders would kick it away with their left foot. But he used to actually turn and kind of back heel it with his, right foot, with his right foot. And he used to always invariably go to one of his own teammates. Where I tried it once, the, other, the striker got it and scored. I was like, yeah, this isn't a good idea. But I only found out years later that I saw Ron Atkinson doing an interview and he said the reason he did that was because his left knee was knackered. And he couldn't clear it. Yeah. And that this that this was a fellow who won PFA player of the year yeah. on one leg. <laughs> so that's just I had to get that. Yeah, well I think okay, well I think McGrath has to be in there, boom, but you're going with a partner and I think there's a lot of there's a lot to be said there for the older players, but I do, do think someone who deserves a massive, massive shout here and probably be my pick is Richard Dunn. 
um, time and time again one day again he had off, off the field problems fixed himself up and became came back a, a better player um, I think it maybe have been Stuart Pearce was the player who kind of got him on the wraps oh, but okay. came back and was winning player of the year for Man City before they had all the riches but he was player of the year player of the year player of the year and then he came in and for Ireland he was just brilliant I think the standout performance for him was obviously Russia with the you know the with number five John Oscar, and, yeah I mean you're talking about McGrath against uh, Baggio I mean the other standout if for any player in Irish short for me was Richard Dunn that night in Moscow. Um, maybe I'm a bit, a bit harsh. I, I, I think Richard was unbelievable that night. I wouldn't have him. He's certainly in the mix. I wouldn't have him in my all-time team. He he took a long time to actually get his place in the Irish team as well. Remember, mm-hmm. I mean, he went to the 2002 World Cup and was, I suppose, kept out by Gary Breen, who, if you're only talking about the 2002 <laughs> World Cup, <laughs> I think he would have been in the team of the tournament. But, I mean, we all dream of the team before, of Gary Breen's? unfortunately, before and after the tournament, he wasn't, he never reached those heights. Um We've just had so many great centre halves. I think, um, I think I'd have Richard in the mix, but probably not, not there as a partner for Paul Link. There's just too many, too many contenders otherwise. Okay, um, well, if you, if if you look, because I mean, I mean, look at that list. Like, okay. it's unbelievable. Yeah, Mark Lawrence That's, and Kevin Moore, Mick McCarthy, Steve Staunton. When well, no, you want to make a John case, O'Shea, but. David O'Leary. I mean, David yeah. O'Leary. Yeah. Um, Arsenal's most most uh, appearances. Yeah. And um, over fifty seven hundred, wasn't it? Seven twenty two. So, yeah. I mean And he went over fifteen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And what did he end up sixty eight caps to uh, score uh, score the winning penalty? And somebody who was very controversially dropped by by Jack Charlton and he yeah. didn't play in Euro eighty eight. Well that's because he went on holiday. I was reading that. Yeah. And the, the he, didn't he, went he didn't go to Iceland. He didn't go to Iceland in eighty six. Yeah. yeah. And and then I mean, if you're on about partnerships, I mean the best partnership I've ever seen is Kevin Moore and Mick McCarthy. As a centre back partnership, they were just the stats on that are just incredible. They just kept so many clean sheets, and uh, so David O'Leary didn't play in, in Euro eighty eight. He he only went to Italia ninety. I mean, I think he came on was at left back for Staunton in that Romania game, and I'm not sure. I, I don't know how he took a penalty. I mean, <laughs> he was the last man. And was just some kindness to do that. Jesus, yeah. not David O'Leary, please <laughs> taking the last penalty. <laughs> Um, but he had he had some kahunas or whatever. Yes, as, as Will says, I mean it was and it was a look a fantastic penalty. Yeah. But um, yeah, he was he was another stylish stylish classy defender. I mean a very different Rolls Royce defender. Yeah, yeah Rolls Royce yeah. very different to Mick yeah. McCarthy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you want no to, nonsense. Uh, yeah, Mick say. McCarthy was a no nonsense uh, centre half, and uh, so. Um, and I wouldn't have Mick in. I, I would have Mick in the shout. I wouldn't have Mick in so as Paul's partner. Um, I'd actually go for Mark Lawrenson. I'm going back a bit again, but a fair another, few people had said that on Twitter. Yeah, Lawrence. he was just such a su- superb player. He was in that great Liverpool team of the eighties. He won a European Cup with them. Won a few leagues. I don't know how many leagues he won. They, were, they seemed to win the league every year in those days. Um, Till Everton stopped. <laughs> Till Everton stopped him with two, true. <laughs> but uh, um, he was an absolute um, class player. Unfortunately, his injury um, cost us dearly. I mean, we lost Mark Lawrence and Liam Brady for Euro 88, and we still had a phenomenal side. But um, I'd, um, my pick would actually be Mark Lawrence. And I, I want to give an, a, a shout out to two of the old timers. Con Martin, first of all, he got 30 caps, but an absolute legend of the game. Starting off as a goalkeeper. We beat Spain in Madrid in 1946, 1-0. Con Martin um, played in goal because we went on a two-match tour and the, the goalkeeper, I think it was Ned Courtney, got injured in the first game against Portugal. And Con Martin, he played GA. And he, he was actually one Brilliant. of the, the first high-profile victims of the ban. And he got his medal taken off. Yeah, or something, he, yeah. He, he won the Leinster Championship with Dublin. And... Uh, he was playing with Drum Condra as well, and the vigilante committee found out his first love was GA. But um, so he was banned, so he had to play football then. Um, ended up anyway. He's his first cap. He he got capped in Portugal because he played GA. He was thrown on in goal. Next game was against Spain. We didn't have a sub goalie in those days, so Con start first start was in goal. Kept a clean sheet. We beat Spain in Madrid. He scored the first goal against England in uh, that famous win in nineteen forty nine. Um, Another legend of the game in the 40s and 50s. Another one who played for the IFA side as well. Uh, 
hugely controversial actually with the FEI because he the, the FEI actually put a lot of pressure on the English clubs not to release players for the IFA and Con insisted, no, I'm still going to play for them until Aston Villa told him we're not going to pay you if you um, if you keep going. But anyway, that's um, the other legend and uh, I want to mention is Charlie Hurley, another uh, favourite of my dad's time, the late 50s and the 60s. Uh, Charlie is a Sunderland legend in Sunderland voted their player of the century for the last century and they voted for Charlie Hurley. So um, that speaks volumes. That says a lot. That's, that says a lot. Um, Charlie Hurley, he got he got forty caps um, from nineteen fifty seven to nineteen sixty nine. He was a a mainstay of the Irish defence right through the sixties. As I said at the time, we got to the last eight of the European Championship in nineteen sixty four. We missed out on the place in the sixty six World Cup on a, on a playoff against Spain. Um, came very close, and there's another long story there that probably is for another day, but. Uh, they definitely should be in the mention. Yeah, Conrad honorable mentions. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so you're going, you've gone with Mark Lawrence. And I'm going to swing my way over to Peter because I know he's a big argument here for a certain player. Yeah, you're talking about players that complement each other well. I, I'd go with Steve Staunton. Um, I think we said it on one of the earlier shows that maybe his you know his reputation with Ireland was a little bit sullied by you know a disastrous spell as, as a manager. But... I remember anyway growing up in the early 90s um, I don't remember him at his first spell at Liverpool but with Aston Villa that was when Aston Villa had quite a lot of Irish players you know uh, Andy Townsend Ray Houghton Paul McGrath um, Steve Sutton and they were probably you know they were duking it out with Man United for the Premier League at, at the very beginning of the Premier League so um, I just remember him as a really classy player and I think the fact he could play left back midfield left midfield shows you what a great all round footballer he was and mm. um, I think back then you could kind of get away with maybe not being a great footballer to be a centre back if you were just no nonsense probably can't do it as much these days but I always remember watching him playing for Aston Villa absolutely pinging 70 or 80 yard passes you know back where the centre backs of the day were probably just pumping it aimlessly long he was like pinging you know what we'd call Beckham-esque passes uh, you know to either wing and a lethal shot great free kick mm. as well and I just think he'd be a brilliant ball playing centre back and he'd complement Paul McGrath perfectly you'd have a left footer and a right footer there Paul could pretty much do everything and Stan could I think Stan read the game very very well which is very important for a centre back so yeah they'd be my kind of ideal partnership would, would be Stanton and, and um and McGran, I do think he actually one of the most iconic photos, I think, from the 1994 World Cup. I don't know if you remember it, but uh, the Irish man abroad photo when he's standing oh, in the yeah. lineup he with that. He looks, looks yeah. like your dad when you go to Spain or something. It's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, his skin was so pale, <laughs> yeah. yeah and, uh, he was very much the Irish man. He was a little man. bit thirsty at that time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, like for, for me, I, I, I'm going Richard Dunn. I just, I just think the way he struggled off the field with uh, with stuff and then came back to be such an important player and you know he was only recently inducted into the Hall of Fame with, with the FAI because of his time there but another player um, his his you were talking about partnerships again John O'Shea mm. has to be yeah. has to be a mention uh, again Absolutely. Yeah. you know I thought it was a nice touch by Martin O'Neill to give him the farewell game and stuff like that an absolute gent and what a pro he was Another man who won the Champions League, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Well, like, like it's it's a toss up between O'Shea and Dunn for me, but I just think, uh, as I said a bit before, I've been constantly getting played here. He was the he was the main man at, at his club, um, whereas O'Shea was, I would, I don't like to say bit part player, but he wasn't as. He wasn't uh, you know, like the way Rio and, and Vidic. Yeah, you had Rio think, and Vidic ahead of him. Yeah, I think he suffered a bit because he was so versatile. I mean, he played in so many positions mm. and it probably worked against him that he couldn't nail down a position. I mean, I know he even went in goal for United in one game. Wasn't mm. it? I, I think he so, benefited yeah. from it in, a, in terms of his club career, though, because I don't think he would have been around Man United as long if he couldn't have wasn't able to plug as many holes, if you know what I mean. Yeah. He was a very, very good player, but he probably wasn't good enough to be... Rival, you know, as a centre back full time, I think he hung around yeah. with United so long because he could play, and he was such a useful squad player. And he used to end up playing like almost thirty games every season because of his versatility. And 
you know, the goal against the goal against Arsenal that yeah, he scored when he looks genuinely shocked that he scored is yeah, pretty But he scored good, important goals again as well Liverpool against Liverpool and yeah. stuff. Uh, but he also during the season, um not the season, you know, we won the Champions League, but the time they got to the Champions League final again, he was right back for that season, wasn't he? Mo, yeah. I think when they He lost, played him in the final. Yeah. Um when they lost against the uh, 2009 final, I think he did yeah, against Barcelona. Pedro yeah. and Messi yeah. had scored, I think, in the final. All right, I can't remember if yeah. he started. But he was right for the most part of that season. And okay. you know, you were, were brilliant. I think it was the year, correct me if I'm wrong, but it could, could have been the year Ronaldo left. That could be right, I think. Yeah, I think Ronaldo. He played that the, was 2009 in Rome, I think. Ronaldo, yeah. Ronaldo played that first, and he left after yeah. that. Um, but I, I can't remember. I know Wes Brown started in the one before, but yeah. Yeah, no, it was after that. Yeah, the one after, yeah. yeah. But so, then as well, I, th- I think John O'Shea, anyone, everyone always remembers, he actually started as a left back with United, yeah. even though he was a centre back coming through the ranks. And yeah, uh, yeah the nutmeg against Figo is another, another moment for the Irish Football F- Hall of Fame, I think, like, you know. Yeah, well, as I say, that's what I just think he's obviously played the higher level, but he wasn't the main man, whereas I think Richie Dunn was. But Will. Um, where am I going with this? Yeah, I mean, you, you you could ultimately decide it here. Well, I'm not going to ultimately decide it because to me, Mark Larson, superb, great player. I think if Mark had have come along five years afterwards and hadn't been injured for Euro 88 and had it been in 90 and, you know, even maybe 94 or something like that, I think he definitely would have been, you know, you look at his record, we talked about before, players with clubs versus country, only 39 caps for Mark. It's just crazy to think that. Um, but for me, the two that, that stood out um, with Paul, Kevin Moran, I was I was brought up with with Tales of the Dubs and stuff. And my yeah, mom was a massive Dubs a, fan. A, a yeah, that two All-Ireland medals. Just incredible. And you see him playing for Dublin and he was just non-stop. Like, you, you must have been a nightmare to play against. Um, and 71 appearances and six goals for Ireland. A great servant to the country, a great player. Um, so he's in my thoughts. But I think the person who I'm going to give it to um, will be Mick McCarthy. And the reason I'd he's give it to Mick... with that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, reason, the reason I'll give he it to Mick... To <laughs> no, 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 hold on. Let's, let, let's be professional on this, right? <laughs> so over you know the past year or so, I've been lucky enough to work with Mick a little bit. Um and coming from a, a football and background and playing the game, he would have been somebody one I would have loved to have played under as a, as my manager, but also as my captain. And I always remember in 1990, he was nicknamed Captain Fantastic, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah that was and to me, you would just go out on that pitch wanting to die for the team. So I think that's a very important attribute which would be brought to the side. It's the one thing Paul McGraw would not have in his locker. To complement that, I think McCarthy brought you strength as a captain, but also his his strength as a player, and I thought him and Paul together would have worked really, really well. And then, as I said, just as as a captain to 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 garner that Irish spirit and to make you, you know, Mick is one of the proudest Irishmen you could meet, even though he was born in Barnsley, I think, wasn't it? Or yeah, Yorkshire. Born in Yorkshire. Yeah. He's born in Barnsley. His um, father is a yeah. Waterford man. Yeah. Exactly, and like yeah. he could not be. Any more Irish? Kev Kilban is the same as well. It yeah. exudes from him. Gary and Green yeah, is the same. That's yeah. what you yeah. want, yeah. kind of, from your captain. And also, as well, I think, as well at that time, there was an awful lot of lads who were of the English mould who were playing for Ireland. Yeah. And you even see some programs. They kind of say, sure, "This is just a whole load of English lads playing for Ireland." You know, kind of, it's not really. I think Mick would have brought that to the team. So I think, with his, um, how do you say it? His, his moulding skills of forming a team, which I think. Is what Ireland is all about. We don't have the best players in the world. We never will have. It's all about being a team. And I think Mick definitely would have brought that. So I would go for Mick. Mick and Paul as centre back for me. I think we might have to leave this one to the comments. Gary, are you switching here at all? No, you're, you're yeah, set. no. I mean, there's a lot of good points about Mick. I, I find it ironic actually because I, I was going. I was at all the games. Mm. I was at the Euro eighty Italia ninety. Mick was constantly being slated by the journalists he shouldn't be in the team. No, actually, he should have been in the team. And I think Mick and Kevin Moran was our best ever partnership. But I find it ironic that now he's actually been... 
strongly in the argument for our greatest ever team when he wasn't <laughs> in most the people's most, first eleven in those days. The only thing um, is, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. If we're picking Mick, we might have to leave a certain midfielder out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. When we get to the midfield, that's what you're talking about because you're talking about as well not just the physical attributes, but the mental attributes that player brings. Yeah. And, you know, you're saying at the time Mick was, you know, being slated for that, but possibly Jack knew what Mick brought to the side oh, I think when did. it came uh, to leadership. I, I, I actually agreed. I mean, I, I, I think Kevin Moore and Mick McCarthy was the ideal partnership with Paul McGrath in front of them. And would you say time. Jack saw a bit of Mick in himself? I, I, uh, you, know, you know, that sort of... A hundred percent. I mean... Because Jack was a limited player. Jack himself, was, you know. yeah. I mean, that's what Jack was. Uh, Jack was the the Mick McCarthy of the nineteen sixty six World Cup winning mm. team. He was, I mean, he was a leader. He was a, a limited player, but a wholehearted player. And the players you need on your team. I mean, you do need a Mick. You do. You need your Mick McCarthys and you need your Paul McGraths. So uh, he wouldn't have been my choice, but I can I can certainly see. Yeah. I, I think it's one to. This we can throw out there how, because we have lots of different opinions. I think about a Twitter poll. I think so. I think that's what's going to have to be. I think it's going to have to be left to the audience to decide. And then when we do our midfield selections, you'll find out who the who the actual partner of Paul McGrath basically is because he's he's a clean sweep for everybody. Isn't yeah, he? I, I think so. I mean, I I would argue strongly if anyone wasn't putting Paul McGrath on the team, mm. but the, the his partner is. I think it's so much. Either way, it's some 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 teams so far. We've got Shea given. Um, Dennis Irwin Gary uh, Kelly and, and Gary Kelly and Paul McGrath already in there so we just need one of our centre backs uh, to compliment Paul McGrath so let us know who you'd have in the comments we really appreciate it uh, if you like the video drop a like on the video and if you haven't subscribed please do so now huge thanks to Peter Henry from Football Faithful Will Dalton do you want to say where you're broadcaster broadcaster <laughs> and Gary Spain absolute yeah. hero and historian <laughs> Uh, now listen uh, huge thanks to the lads and uh, tune in soon we'll have uh, the rest of the positions finished up and uh, get to the bottom of this all time Ireland 11 speak to you soon thanks for watching